بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to Mutahar Scholar So this is uh, chapter 2 and this is the second section uh, We have seen in the previous section the problem uh, and uh, the methods we, uh, we will study in this chapter We have also revised briefly uh, the inner product Now we will focus in this section uh, on the algebra related to matrices. Before to see Kramer's method, uh, we make a small revision on, uh, on algebra, on the part of algebra related to matrices. We will see uh, determinants, identity matrix, uh, the inverse of a matrix, the rank of a matrix, and then we make uh, uh, a conclusion. I will give also uh, at the end of this uh, of this section and the end of this video because this video will be dedicated to this section the whole video at the end of it I will give a reference uh, a book a good book in Nilia algebra for those who want maybe to uh, to see more examples or to check uh, the proof of uh, of the theorems we uh, we will present in this section so let us begin with the determinant. What is a determinant? So first, determinant of a matrix. So first thing first is the definition. The determinant of a matrix is a scalar and we denote it by DOT determinant. Even in MATLAB there is a function, a built-in function called DOT and it returns the determinant of the given matrix. The matrix has to be square. So the determinant of A is defined as follow. The sum j from 1 till m minus 1 to the power of i plus j uh, this term will be plus or minus depending of the indices the index row the row index and the column index times a i j the element at the ij, at the ith row, and the jth column. And mij, mij is called the minor. The minor of the coefficient aij. And it is defined, so first of all, a must belong to rm by m is a square matrix and uh, the minor of uh, ij is a sub matrix this is a for example we have this is i and this is j and this is the element this is the element aij. So you eliminate the column j and the row j of the matrix, you obtain a submatrix. Then you calculate its determinant. So the determinant of that submatrix is the minor. The minor of aij is the determinant of the submatrix submatrix of A obtained by eliminating the row I and the column J and the row, so this is the first note, second note, 
the third node, I is fixed. So you fix a row and then you go element by element in the row. And at each element, you determine the minor and the sign, minus or plus, until you cross all the elements of the row. So I is fixed. And J is uh, varying or crosses the range 1 to M. Or you can also, it is also equivalent to fix the column. J is fixed. And the sum is on I, not on J. From one to M. You can choose a column or a row, uh, whatever you want, whatever you want, and you obtain always the same result. Same. So the determinant does not depend on the row or the column you choose. It's always the same result. This is a theorem. And uh, another important thing here, when you choose the row or a column, choose the row or the column that contains uh, the, the most number of the largest number of, uh, of elements that are equal to zero. I will see an example to apply this uh, definition. Uh, this is the formal way, but we will see uh, an example, uh, two examples actually. So this is the determinant. Let's expand the sum. So in expanded form, in expanded form, we get the determinant of A is by definition minus 1 i plus 1. So this can be plus or minus. If i plus 1 is a, is an odd number, then it is minus. And if the exponent is an even number, then it is plus. So it depends on the exponent. So you do not have to calculate, of course, mine. It just means the sign will alternate will alternate between plus and minus. And then and then i i1 times times the minor i1 plus etc until minus 1 i plus m i a u m m times times m i m so it goes from 1 to m j goes from 1 to m and uh, this is a determinant so you have also to apply the formula to calculate it to calculate the minor and then you obtain a smaller submatrix and and so on submatrices will uh, will decrease in size until you get only one element uh, so it needs uh, it needs a lot of calculations. Uh, this is the ma uh, the main disadvantage uh, to calculate the determinant with this formula with this formal formula. We will see later with Gaussian elimination. It's very 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 easy to calculate. So so this is the formal definition. Uh, let's see an an example. So two. That was definition. Definition. Let's see two examples. The same examples are the same systems we have seen in the, in the first section. So in the first uh, example, if you remember, the matrix was 1, 2.3, 0 0.7, the first system, 4.5. And to calculate the determinant of this matrix, we can also note like this. Instead of writing DOT, we can just write this. Not, uh, 
not brackets, brackets are for matrices. When you write just a line, it means a determinant. And hence, according to the definition, we choose any row, this one or this one, any column, the first or the second. Let's choose the first row. Let's choose the first row. So we have one, plus or minus plus, because uh, the, uh, the sum, one plus one. It's, a, it's an even number. So plus one. It goes plus one, minus one. Okay, so plus one. And uh, the element, and then the minor. The minor, you eliminate the first line and the first column. You eliminate the column, you eliminate the row that contains the first element, and you eliminate the column. You get only one number. Because here the matrix is small, it's only two, two by two. So, so the, the minor here is 4.5. This is the minor. And this is the sign. And then, and then minus, because it alternates, plus, minus, plus, minus. When you cross the elements, it alternates, plus, minus, plus, minus, or minus, plus, depending of the sign of the first element. So we started with plus, the next will become minus. And the element is 0, 7. And it's minor, you eliminate the second column and the first, because the second column and the first intersect at the element we have chosen, 0 0.7. So the minor is 2.3, is 2.3. This is the second minor. And we get, and we get the value I've already calculated. Uh, let me check, yes, 2.89. So this is the determinant of the first matrix. Here I have just to add a note here. Uh, oh, let's write it here. The term minus 1, i plus j, times the minor, is called the cofactor. The cofactor, uh, a i j. So the cofactor is simply the minor and the sign. That's it. I've already defined what is the minor. It's the determinant. The cofactor is the minor with the sign plus or minus. And that's it, because we will use a cofactor in the nomenclature should understand what it means. So we have finished with first example. Let's see the second example. So the second example, the determinant of the determinant of the matrix 2.5 And here also, we choose to cross the first row. It has three elements. We start with plus, because 1, 1, i equal 1, and j equal 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so plus. Plus, minus, plus. And, and we calculate the the determinant so 2.5 the minor we eliminate the row and the column containing containing the element so it's 2.9 0 1.2 5.8 uh, so this is the determinant of the minor second element minus one and the minor 1.5 and 3.7 and 1.2 5.8 and the third is a plus 
minus one. The element is minus one, but the sign is plus. So let's, because we do that first time, for clarity, pedagogical sign, sign, write the signs. And we have the minor 1.5, 3.7, 2.9, 2.8, 3.8, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 
is how many uh, how many flops how many operating floating operating uh, floating operations per second you need so performance so the first and this is the sole theorem that to calculate to calculate the determinant of a a belonging to RMM it has M rows and columns uh, we need in the order of M factorial M factorial flops flops means I have already explained that I think practicals floating it's the time taken by the computer to perform an operation floating operation between real numbers like uh, multiplication, uh, division, uh, addition, subtraction, the four main uh, arithmetic operations. So floating operations per second. O n factorial, O n factorial. Uh, for example, for example, if we take m equal 50, we need 3 times 10 to the power of 55 tetraflops. Tetraflop, it means trillion of flops. I mean teraflops. So teraflops. Not tetra, teraflops. Means trillion of flops because the computers now, uh, laptop and PCs, uh, have uh, almost uh, the majority between two, three teraflops. They can do uh, two, three trillion flops per se flop per second. Uh, so, how this is a number of seconds. If you convert that to years, you will find millions of years. It will take millions of years of any computer of, uh, of nowadays. Millions of years. So, it's uh, impossible, of course. Albeit, it's not a large matrix. Huh? 50 is not larger. Matrices nowadays we manipulate have millions of, uh, of rows and columns. And the second uh, property is the distributivity. The determinant of the product of the inner product of A dot B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. We distribute DOT to A and B. So determinant, it is also called sometimes multiplicativity. Determinant of A times a determinant of V. Uh, this property is called distributivity. Distributivity of the determinant uh, with regard to the dot, the inner product. And the third, and this is very important later, we will see. Uh, we will uh, use it later, even here, but it is important when we study consistency, uh, conditioning of a matrix. So the third property is uh, when you have uh, a diagonal or a triangular matrix. Triangular matrix, all the elements above the diagonal are different from zero. This is called an upper triangular matrix. When a square matrix and all the elements below the diagonal are different zero, but above are all equal to zero, is called lower matrix. Lower triangular, because it looks like a triangle, triangular matrix. And diagonal, we have already seen it. The elements, the non zero elements, are on the diagonal. And that's where outside the diagonal are equal to zero. So this is diagonal matrix. Well, the determinant 
of a triangular or a diagonal is equal to the product of the elements on the diagonal. And this is how actually uh, Gaussian elimination calculates the determinant. It transforms the matrix to a triangular matrix. Then the determinant, you just have to multiply the elements, all the elements on, uh, on the diagonal. So it's a very useful property of the determinant. Even MATLAB, when you calculate the determinant, it doesn't use that. Huh? It doesn't use uh, minors and uh, and go cross a uh, row or column. It uses the uh, uh, Gaussian elimination. So, determinant, let's call it matrix T. The determinant of T is equal to the product of TPP means the element at the diagonal at the row P and column P. Row P and column P. The elements on the diagonal have the same index for the row and the column. So TPP with P from 1 till M in the general case. Okay, the third property, this is the third property, the fourth property, uh, let's see an example. Okay, for example, the matrix A equals 1, 2, 3, for example, 4, 5, 6, and here we have 0. Here we have 0. So, our property tells us that it is actually the product. And you can check that very easily. You, 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 get, you, tell, you deal with the first column. You choose the first column. And you apply the, the, the definition we have just seen. So, the element and its minor. Its minor is, is this one. And the other, the, the, the other elements are equal to zero. So we have only one element and, and it's minor. We apply again it's minor. The same rule. First column, it's a zero. So we, we deal only with this, with the first element. That is four. So we have actually one, then the minor four, five, zero, six. And we apply again to that, we have 1, this is 0, only this element uh, will go to the sum, we contribute to the sum. So 4, and we eliminate, we get it's minor 6. So it is actually 1, 4, 6, exactly what the property tells us. So each time you have a column, in different minors, when it's large matrix, in different uh, minors, you have only one single element, because the other elements are equal to zero. So, equal 24. So when you have a diag when diagonal matrix or triangular matrix, don't calculate minors, just multiply all the elements on the diagonal and you get the product or the element, elements on the diagonal, and you get the determinant. So let's move to the, the fourth property. The determinant transpose of a matrix. The determinant of the transpose of the matrix is equal to the determinant of the matrix itself. You can uh, swap the columns and the rows, what was a column becomes a row, and what was a row become a column, it will not change the determinant. And uh, this is also important later when we study the rank in this, uh, in this section. So the fifth and last properties is when you, you scale a matrix. The determinant of a scalar alpha, a number, a real number, whatever uh, it is, different from zero, 
and times the matrix A. Now I've scaled alpha. You have scaled I A, the matrix A by alpha. All the elements of A are multiplied by alpha. The determinant is not alpha determinant of A, is alpha to the power of A times the determinant of A. And you can see that very easily because alpha A, you scale all the columns or all the rows by the same alpha. And we have seen uh, in the previous section in the inner product that when you multiply a diagonal matrix containing the scalars, here we have only one scalar. So we have alpha, alpha on the diagonal, alpha, and zero as well, times a. These are equivalent. Alpha unit will be multiplied by uh, the first row, alpha, by the second row, the same scalar. And we have seen that in the inner product. When you, when you want to scale columns or rows, multiply by a diagonal matrix containing the scalar. And here, as I said, we have only one scalar. So, and now let's supply the distributivity. So, determinant of alpha A is the determinant of the diagonal matrix diagonal matrix times the determinant because the determinant of the inner product is the products of the determinant. This is what tells us the distributivity property. So, determinant of A. And what is the determinant of a triangular matrix or a diagonal matrix? Is the product of all the elements on, on the diagonal, which is which is alpha m, of course, for e till m. Here there is no index, it's the same alpha. You repeat it m times. So this is alpha m by times the determinant of a. So it is equal indeed to alpha m times the determinant of a. So you can easily check using uh, a diagonal matrix uh, instead of a scalar. So this is uh, the properties, the most important properties for uh, determinants. Let's move to uh, the, second, uh, the second point, the identity matrix. Um, the second point, identity matrix, the identity matrix. So we start with the definition. All these are, of course, basic concepts in, in linear algebra, but it is uh, nice to revise them for, uh, for the rest of the chapter. So uh, the identity matrix is a diagonal matrix. Is a diagonal matrix whose all, e all elements in the diagonal are equal to 1. So as where well, it's a 0, and we denote it I M. M is the number of rows by the number of columns. So the matrix I M belong, belongs to or is a member of R M by M, whose all the element whose all elements uh, on the diagonal are equals to 1. We can write it in this way, matrix form or tabular form, or in indicial form. In indicial form, we use, we use the chronicler symbol. So I am the element at IJ, is can also be denoted by the chronicle delta ij which is defined chronicle 
is a mathematician, a chronicler, uh, to honor his work, uh, they call it the chronicler. I think in tensor, in tensors, uh, which is uh, another way to uh, to express matrices, vectors, and scalars, and also a, a, a higher order with several uh, indices. Anyway, it is called chronicler, and chronicler is a mathematician, and its definition is very simple. It is equal to 1 when i equals j, that is, the element is on the diagonal, and it is equal to 0 otherwise, that is, when i is different from j. For example, in uh, R3, in the ambient space, space, uh, uh, the physical space we see every day, in R3, the identity matrix is 1, 1, 1, and the uh, 0. So very simple. Uh, let's see now the properties. So the properties. There are two properties actually. Uh, the first one use uh, what we call the standard basis. The standard basis. Use the concept of the standard basis, which is defined by the family EJ, J from 1 till M, uh, such that the norm Let's write it here. The norm of any EJ is equal to 1. And uh, you take two vectors from the family. For example, uh, I, EI dot EJ, the inner product of two vectors uh, of the family, with uh, I different from J you find it equal to zero. It is they are orthogonal uh, to each other. And uh, we can see very easily that actually each column, each column of the identity matrix, the column J, for example, equal the vector EJ of the standard basis for j from 1 till m. In, in real, in the ambient space, on the axis, this is the standard basis. This is e1. and E2, and E3. They are orthogonal to each other. And the distance here, I mean the length, the distance from this point to this point, the length is equal to 1. Uh, in uh, in high school, maybe you know that I, J, I, J, and K, it's uh, the same. So the columns, the columns, let's write it here, the columns of the identity matrix I am constitute, constitute, constitute the standard basis of Rm. Standard basis of Rm. Uh, an example, the same here example, 
A1 A2 is the first column of I3 which is 1, 0, 0 and A2 is the second column of the identity matrix and is equal to 0, 1, 0 all the components are equal to zero except except the index of uh, except the component corresponding to the index of the vector so e2 the second component e1 the first component equals to one and e3 the identity matrix the third column and is equal to zero zero uh, one So this is the geometric interpretation in R3, the ambient space. And, and that's it. So the identity matrix is related to the standard basis. And the second property is when you, uh, for any vector u, in RM, whatever U in RM, and whatever the matrix A in RM by M, the inner product of U dot IM is equal to IM dot U is equal to U. So the identity matrix is absorbed by the other operand in the inner product. It plays the same role as uh, one in R. If you remember, in uh, real number, for whatever alpha in R, one times alpha equal alpha times one equal alpha. And that's why it is called the identity matrix. They the same thing as when the identity in real numbers. Here is multiplication and real numbers. And here we play, we, uh, we apply uh, matrices or vectors in, in vectorial spaces. Same for A. When you have A dot I am it is the same as I am dot A and it equals also A. It is absorbed by the matrix. So it plays the same or the equivalent role that one applies in R. And uh, that's it. Uh, let us move to the third point. Uh, so the third point is the inverse of a matrix. Let A, matrix A, be in RMM, so square matrix with M rows and M columns. Uh, we denote the inverse the inverse of A by A minus 1. And it, rep it, represents, it represents the, uh, the inverse of the linear mapping uh, associated to A. So if A to every vector x in Rm, it associates the vector y also in Rm, and that is equal to a dot x. So this is the linear mapping uh, associated to the matrix A. 
to x, we associate y. The inverse is defined by the inverse matrix. The inverse mapping will associate to the vector y in Rm the vector x, such that the mapping is defined by a minus 1 dot y. So the inner product of y will give us x. It's the inverse of the first linear mapping. Here observe that actually not all matrices have an inverse. They should be a certain condition. We will see it later in this section. So not all matrices have an inverse. When a matrix, when a matrix has an inverse, it is called it is called invertible. Invertible. Otherwise, otherwise, it is called singular. So, a singular matrix has no inverse. The inverse linear mapping does not exist. And invertible, it has such, uh, such matrix, I minus 1. Uh, now, let's uh, find uh, or establish an important relation between a and i minus 1. We have y equal, from the definition, y equal a, y is the image of x by y, by a, y equal a x, a dot x. And x, we have seen it's the inverse image of the image. So it is i minus 1 dot y. And because the dot, the inner product is associative, we can write like this. A, a minus 1 dot y. Or for whatever y in Rm. What does that mean? It means the vector y absorbs uh, this product. This is uh, like the identity matrix. It's neutral uh, with respect to the inner product. So this should be the identity matrix. Matrix. It is written here. A vector, whatever vector in Rm, if you dot it with Rm, or I am with uh, the vector u, it's the vector itself. So this should be the identity matrix. The identity matrix. So we have the important relation that a dot a minus 1 equal, equal the identity matrix. It's like uh, in, uh, in the field of real, uh, real numbers, in R, we have in R that alpha times its inverse, alpha minus 1, equal 1. We can write alpha minus 1 or 1 over alpha. It's the same, but not uh, in matrices. Um, matrices uh, 1 over I m is different, is uh, the inverse of each element of m of uh, the identity matrix. So uh, it's different from I am minus 1. How to see the, the contrast? Now this is important relation that define uh, a matrix. Any matrix you multiply by matrix A and you find it's the identity matrix, then that matrix is the inverse. So this is the first point, definition. Second point, calculating 
or computing. Computing the inverse matrix is more difficult, of course. Computing the inverse matrix. Uh, there is two, two techniques. Uh, Kramer's method. Uh, we get a very simple formula. We'll see it later in this chapter. Kramer's method uh, gives us a simple uh, formula. But it's useless when uh, the matrix uh, is larger. It is useful when you work with uh, small matrices, uh, two by two or three by three. Two by two by th three by three, it's very easy to calculate uh, the inverse of a matrix. We will see that when we, when, we, uh, when we reach the method, Kramer's method. So give us a simple formula, uh, but is inaccurate or impractical, impractical, and inaccurate in accurate for large matrices. And the Gaussian uh, elimination Gaussian elimination use this formula actually to uh, to calculate the inverse use uh, LU decomposition LU decomposition to calculate or to compute uh, the inverse but is expensive numerically expensive I mean uh, computationally expensive expensive computationally so so the rule here it is better to solve the system ax equal b than to calculate a minus one and then write x equal a minus one the dot product dot b so you calculate the uh, the inverse and then you you perform the inner product and this is inefficient this is inefficient it is better to directly solve the system to find the source of the mapping of the unknown uh, vector x so this is for complete we will see uh, some example when we when we study the methods here we are learning the basics uh, the basic concepts in uh, in linear algebra and the third point is some properties related to the inverse so the first property uh, singular or invertible matrix. What is the condition that the matrix A must satisfy to be uh, invertible? Uh, to be uh, inver to be invertible, that is, uh, its inverse exists. Singular or invertible matrix. So we come back to that, to that, uh, to this relation that defines. Uh, the inverse. So let's perform or apply the determinant to the dot product a i minus one. It should be equal to the determinant according to this relation i m. Well, the determinant of i m is one. Is the product of the this is a diagonal matrix. The determinant is the product of the elements on the diagonal, as we have seen uh, before. So it's one. And here we use the distributivity, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. So determinant of A times, this is a number, real number, times the determinant of A minus one. 
So if the matrix is invertible, is invertible and its determinant is equal to zero, is equal to zero, what do we get? We get zero times a number equal one. This is absurd because this is zero and this one. Whatever, any number, a real number, you multiply it by zero, you get zero, not one. So this is absurd. Illogical. And wh 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 what does that uh, imply? It implies if the matrix is invertible, then the determinant is different from zero. This is the negation of the, of the implication. If A is invertible, we must have the determinant of A is different from zero. Because the negation of that is absurd, as we have seen. So that must be true. And uh, we can formulate that also. Uh, A is singular, or equivalently, this assertion is equivalent to this one. A is singular only when the determinant of A equals zero. So to recognize if a matrix is invertible or not, we calculate its determinant. If it is equal to zero, then it is singular. There is no inverse. Otherwise, otherwise it is invertible. The second property comes from the determinant of A times the determinant of a minus 1 equal 1. This implies that the determinant of A minus 1 of the inverse is the inverse of the determinant. Or we can also write it, determinant of A minus 1. So you can extract minus 1 from the parentheses. The determinant of the inverse is the inverse of the determinant. So this is the second property. And the third property is that the inverse of the inner product of A and B, the inverse is the inverse, is the dot product, the inner product of the inverse of the two matrices but in the reverse order, like we have done with the transpose. So B first minus 1, and then A minus 1. The inverse of B dot the inverse of A. Now you can easily very check that or verify it or prove it uh, using the definition. And all these, all the properties, as I said before, are theorems. Now we have proved the first time because it's very simple. And the fourth, the fourth, the fourth is uh, the transpose, the inverse of the transpose is the transpose of the inverse. So you want to calculate the inverse of the transpose, you transpose the inverse of the matrix. Some, some authors write it like this, A minus T, ah, it's equivalent. It means the transpose of the inverse, or the inverse of the transpose. And that's it. Let's move to the to the fourth uh, to the fourth point in this section: a rank of a matrix. The rank of a matrix. Uh, the first point in this section is basis 
and dimension of a vector space. So, uh, what is a base? A basis of a vector space. A basis is a, a family. Is a family of vectors in the space. So an indexed set from i equal one till m. So a finite set of, uh, of vectors that must satisfy two conditions. It must span the vector space, and it must be uh, all the vectors in the basis must be linear independent. So how we write that formally? A basis is a family of vectors that must satisfy the following the following conditions. So the vector space, let's call it V. So V is the vector space. And the span UI span the family UI till M span V means whatever the vector V in big V there exists a family of real numbers of coefficients alpha i, i from 1 till m, such that in R, such that the vector v can be expressed as the sum of the, of the vectors in the basis times alpha p, with p from 1 till m. That is, that is the vector v is equal to alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus etc. till alpha m u m. So the alpha, the coefficients alpha are called the coordinates the coordinates the coordinates the coordinates of the vector v in the basis ui i from 1 till m this is the first thing uh, that the basis must satisfy it must span the vector v. Uh, the second condition is that the family ui i from 1 till m is linearly independent or uh, the vectors in the family are linearly independent. Let's write r are linearly independent. linearly independent. What does that mean? It means for whatever family of coefficients beta i, i from 1 till m, in real number, in the set of real numbers, if we have a combination beta p, the vectors up, so the sum on p, p from 1 till m, if it is equal to zero, the zero vector, the vector whose elements are all equal to zero, if this is true, then the beta must all be equal to zero. Must all be equal to zero, whatever i from 1 till m. What does that mean? It means the coordinates of the vector 0 in the basis 
are all equal to zero. So let's write that here. Zero has zero coordinates in the basis. We can also say that uh, suppose, for example, one beta is not different from zero. For example, for example, a beta two is different from zero. Then you can write u two as a combination. So you have beta one u one plus beta three u three, etc. Till beta m u m. 1 over beta 1 beta m so you are writing u2 as a combination of the other elements in the in the basis the other vectors in the basis or in other words if beta 2 equals 0, we have said here, all must be equal 0. So we can express this uh, condition that there is no, there is no vector in the basis that can be written as a combination. of the other vectors of the basis. No vector in the basis depends on the other vectors. So you cannot find the combination of, uh, of these vectors together. They are linearly independent. That's what it means. If such family has satisfy these two conditions, it span the vector space and the elements of the basis are linearly independent, it is called a basis. So and the vector space can have an infinity uh, of basis. But but the number, the number of the, of the vectors in the basis is unique and is called the dimension. So the dimension so third point here, the dimension of V is M, the number of vectors in the basis, UI, from I1 to M. Uh, again, the dimension is unique, but the base, the, the vectors, you can find an infinity. You can just, for example, rotate a vector space, uh, a basis in, uh, for example, in, uh, let's say, yeah, for example, in two dimension, in R2. We have seen the standard basis. This is the standard basis. E1 and E2. The length here is 1. And they are orthogonal. So E1, E2 is a basis, is a standard basis of R2, is a basis. But so is also. Any rotation of uh, the basis in one two, for example, this is U one, and this is U two, and you can of course have different lenses or not necessarily uh, are orthogonal because it is a rotation. 
you, you can have two vectors here that constitute a basis without being orthogonal now. So you have an infinity of bases, but always they will never, the number of them will never exceed two. And that's why we write here too, the components also, the coordinates of each vector in R2 is two, it has two coordinates. So that's the basis and the dimension. We need that uh, later in, the, in this section. Here I beg your pardon, it's uh, 1 over minus beta 2, uh, not beta 1, and minus, because we have taken one term in one side and the other in the other side. The second point is the image space of a matrix. the image space of a matrix. We have said that A can be considered as a linear, uh, uh, representing a linear mapping that associates a vector X in Rn, in general case Rn, to a vector U, to the vector Y in Rm, such that y equal a, the vector y equal matrix a dot x. So a is a matrix m by n. So we call that the input, uh, the elements that belong to Rn and have an image is called the input space. And here, the elements that have an image in Rm are called, uh, belong, I mean, to the space called image space. Image space is a subspace of Rm. It can be the whole Rm or just a subspace of it. And same for the input space. We call that also in... Uh, linear mapping, domain, and codomain. So the input space and the image space. Now we are interesting here to study the image space uh, using the columns of A. Well, let's write it like this. For example, we have a matrix with six column, columns and four rows. So four by three, a matrix M. And the, uh, the columns of A, the columns of A, the columns of A span, the columns of A span the image space. Because by definition, because any vector in the image space, in the image space of A, this is the image space of A, any vector in the image space of A can be written as A X, that is, that is, Let's write it here. A1, first column, X1, plus A2, X2, plus etc. AN, XN. So, this is exactly the meaning of a span. These are the coordinates of x 
in the family of columns and we can say that the family of columns ij j from 1 till n is a span is a span of image of a but not necessarily a basis but not necessarily a basis as we have seen just be before this uh, point this subsection that a family of vectors to be uh, a basis it must span the space but also the columns here yeah, the elements of the family the vectors of the family must be linearly independent and uh, you could find for example but not a basis you could find for example some columns only some in green here yeah, for example are linearly independent so this is an example so only a1 the first a2 I mean 2, 3, 4, A4, and A5 are linearly, linearly independent. But the others are dependent. They depend of each other. So here the basis is constituted only of three vectors we say that the rank of the matrix is three the rank of a is three so the definition of a rank of a matrix is the dimension by definition is the dimension of the image space or equivalently is the number of columns of the columns of A that are linearly independent this is the definition of the rank of the rank of a matrix so the rank of the matrix counts the number of columns that are linearly independent or the size of the basis such that all the elements in the image space can be expressed uh, with these three columns with these uh, lin in linearly independent columns um, the, here the rank we have seen it as an example yeah i said one three but in concrete way how we can find the rank we will see later that uh, it's very very simple to calculate it with Kramer's method or with gaussian uh, gaussian uh, elimination it's a byproduct uh, it's not a new technique or it's a, a consequence of the method it's very easy to calculate but its meaning if it is uh, different from the number of columns here we have uh, 4 by 6 if it is different from 6 it means that the columns of A do, do not constitute a basis and only the element uh, only the, the columns of the, of the matrix that are linear independent constitute a basis and that's the meaning of the rank now let's move to, uh, to the third point uh, the null space of a matrix so 
So the new space, let's note it like this, is all the vectors in uh, Rm, in uh, Rn, I mean, in the input space. All the vectors in Rn that are mapped that are mapped to zero, to the zero vector. That is, that is the null space of A is all the vector X in Rn such that Ax, Ax equals zero. All the vectors in Rn that satisfy uh, this relation, their mapping, their image is zero, are uh, elements of the null space A. This is called the homogeneous, the homogeneous homogeneous system related to the matrix A. If it is different from zero, it's non-homogeneous. We generally solve a non-homogeneous system. Ax equal b. But in the case uh, the vector b is equal to zero, we call it homogeneous system. So you can also express the null space as you can also say by definition, this is the definition, you can also express it as all solutions of the homogeneous the homogeneous system. So this is the definition of, of the null space. Uh, be careful here, the null space belongs to Rn and the image space belongs to Rm. So because it is related to no space is related to the sources and image space is uh, the space that contains all the images all possible images note that homogeneous is with e not i homogeneous now let us see um, some properties related to the image space and the null space and the rank of a matrix. So the fourth point, properties. And again here, the properties are theorem. I give them without proof, otherwise it will take a long time. The first property is what we call the rank theorem. The rank theorem. So let's say we have a matrix A from Rn to Rm and for each x vector in Rn it associates a vector y equals Ax. So the theorem tells us that the number of columns is equal to the dimension they are D uh, I M means dimension. The dimension of the null space A plus the dimension of the image space of the matrix A. So the image uh, space and the null space, albeit they belong to different spaces, Image A is a subspace of, of Rm, and null space is a subspace of Rn. But the, the, their dimension are related in this way. If you add their dimension, you should find the number of columns. And uh, the second a property is uh, for a singular matrix. For a singular matrix. 
the singular uh, matrix uh, is such that there are some columns some columns of A some columns not all some columns of A that are some col there are some columns of A that are linearly dependent linearly dependent dependent uh, what does that mean it means that the rank of the matrix is less than the number uh, of columns and here for singular matrices and invertible matrices when we talk about singular matrices invertible matrices determinant we are dealing with uh, rm to rn so the number of columns and the number of rows are the same so yeah for a there are some columns of a in rm by rm oh yeah we have a matrix the number of columns equals the number of rows a square matrix a is a square for this property here it is general square or not but here a must be uh, a square matrix is is square so singular matrix means the determinant of a equals zero so if the determinant of a equals zero then we have the rank of a is less than m is less than m some columns are uh, not linearly independent or vice versa it is equivalent for each a in rm by m and the third is the opposite for invertible matrices A matrix is invertible under the condition that all the columns are linearly independent, which means which means the columns constitute a basis of uh, the image space. So we have for whatever A in Rm by M, if the determinant of A is different from zero then the rank of a means the number of columns that are linearly independent is equal to m and vice versa and this also implies this uh, also implies that the image space of a is the whole rm is not a subspace like in a singular matrix so the image of a is rm you take any vector in rm you are sure it is an image of another vector by the matrix a because the columns of a are a basis of rm rm has dimension m and the image a has also dimension m so they have the they are they are, they are the same otherwise yeah it is a subspace of Rm. So another important uh, consequence of, uh, or uh, not consequence, property of an invertible matrix. So let's call that first point. Second point. Uh, if A is invertible, that is, the determinant of A is different from zero, then the null space, the null space, of A has a dimension has a dimension equal to zero due to the rank theorem because this is equal to M and the number of columns equal to M so the dimension of the null space equals zero the dimension and vice versa the dimension of null space of A equals zero so the dimension 
of null a is m, the number of columns, minus the dimension of the image of a. And this is equal because it is invertible, the determinant is different from zero. This is equal to m, and hence it is equal to zero. Uh, a space, a vector space that has a dimension equal to zero has a single element. It is a singleton by definition. And the singleton, the single vector must be equal to the vector zero because zero is always a solution of the homogeneous system. So, so this also implies that no space of A dimension equals zero is equal to the singleton vector zero. It has no other vector. The only solution of the homogeneous system is zero. Because we have said here, the null space is all solution of the homogeneous system. When the matrix is invertible, there is no other solution of homogeneous system than the zero vector, the trivial solution. So these are uh, the, uh, the main properties related to the null space and the image space and the rank. Let's see an example, a concrete example. Fifth point. Uh, let us take, take as an example. I have not chosen it randomly uh, on purpose. Some columns are linearly independent and some are not. It is a matrix of three by three. And you can observe that the first column and the third column are linearly independent. They do, do not, you cannot find a combination that this is the, a scalar of this. Impossible. But the third column is a combination of the first and the third. So I have written it such that the third, the second column is 0 0.5 by the first column plus 1.5 of the third column. So here yeah, what we can conclude. We can say that the rank, so these are linearly independent, but not the second column. So we can say that the rank of A is 2, is the number of columns that are linearly independent. The image space so it has two consequences. The image space, the image space of A has a dimension of two. It is a plane. It is a plane in R3. And it has a basis or spanned. It is spanned by the basis. the first column and the third column. This is R3. For example, I will not follow exactly the values, but for example, something like that. This is a plane of 
this is a plane spanned by, for example, A1, first column, and A2, A3, the third column. A1 is by definition the first column, and A3 is by definition the third column. So all the images of the linear mapping represented by the matrix A are here, are in the plane, or parallel to the plane. And of course can be extended in the space, but parallel to the plane. It is spanned by A1, A2. A1, A2, A1 and A3 are the basis. A1 and A3 are a basis of the image. Okay. So this is the first consequence of the fact that the rank equal to. And the second is that the node space has a dimension of one because we have three columns and the rank equal two. And according to the rank theorem, the dimension the sum of the dimension of the null space and the image space must be equal to the number of columns. So the null space of A has a dimension of 1. It is a line. Here it is a plane. Here it is a line in R3. Now, how to find it is more complex. Uh, you have to solve null is R3. Uh, any solution any solution of the homogeneous system Ax equals zero, we can solve that using, for example, Gaussian elimination. We cannot use the Kramer's method because the determinant equals zero. The matrix is singular. The matrix, the matrix A is singular. Let's write it here. A is singular because its rank is different of the number of columns. But with uh, so any solution with the Gaussian elimination, any solution of AX is a basis of the null A. So using Gaussian elimination that we will see later, elimination, we can see that u, the vector u, 1, minus 2, and 3, is a solution of the homogeneous system. What does that mean? It means that the line is carried by the vector u. So here, again, the ambient space and the line should be like this. If u is a solution of ax equals 0, any alpha u is also a solution. So u, u is a basis of the line. Line is one dimension. So it has a basis of one vector. The vector u should be like this. I do not also follow here the number just for pedagogical reason. Uh, I can draw that with MATLAB, of course, but here we just want to understand the meaning geometrically. So this is the vector u, and this is, let's write it, this is the null space of A. All the vectors in carried by the line are uh, elements of the null space A. You can say also are generated by the vector U. So this is the null space A, and this is the image space of A. 
for a matrix that is singular. When the matrix is not singular, you do not have to, uh, to worry. Image space is the whole space uh, you are dealing with. If you have M columns, then it is RM. And uh, the, the image space, the null space is equal to the singleton zero. But when it is singular, we have a, a more complex scenario. So let's conclude that. Let's make a conclusion uh, to what we have uh, already seen uh, in this section. So six, conclusion. So the conclusion for any system AX equal B, it can be seen as a mapping X RM to Y in RM, the same number of components in the two vectors, uh, such that linear mapping such that we have two cases. A is invertible, which is normally the case we deal uh, with uh, when you have to solve a system, normally A is uh, invertible. But there is also the case sometimes when the matrix is uh, singular, and you, you should know how to deal with that. So A is invertible, and the second case, A, is singular. We just summarize what we have seen already, uh, not newer properties or so, theorems, uh, just what we have already seen. Singular, invertible, and singular. Okay, let's make it like this. Uh, the first, all the properties here that we will put here in this uh, column, are uh, equivalent. So you say A is invertible, it means that the determinant of A is different from zero. Or equivalently, that the rank of A equal M, the number of columns or rows. And three, that the image, equivalently, that the image of A is a whole RM is not a subspace, it's the, sp the space itself. And equivalently, the null, the null space of A equal singleton zero. The only solution of the homogeneous system, homogeneous system without B equals zero, is zero, is a trivial solution, no other solution. And the fifth is that the system AX equal B has the system AX equal B has a unique has a unique solution. You can't find two solutions of the same. It's impossible. And all these consequent all these properties are equivalent. So this is for an invertible, and as I've said, uh, most of the cases you have to deal with the matrix is invertible. So A is singular. We have also here determinant A is singular it means the determinant of A equals zero. It means also that some columns are linearly dependent and hence the rank of A cannot be equal to M. It is less than M. And the third, that the image of A the image space is inside RM, but is not RM. There are elements of RM, like here, outside the plane, that uh, such that you cannot associate uh, an image. Uh, I mean, you cannot associate an element from uh, the input space uh, to them. They cannot be an image of any vector. Impossible. Because all the images are included in, uh, in the image space. And it is a subspace, not a whole space. So the image space is included in RM. 
And the fourth property, also equivalent, is that the dimension of so null, uh, the null space of A contains an infinity of uh, elements. There is an infinity of solution of the homogeneous system. And its dimension, it is a space, and its dimension is given by the rank theorem. It is equal to M minus rank of A. And the fifth uh, property is that the system, the system A x equal b will have will have an infinity of solution an infinity of solution of solutions if b belongs to the image a what does that mean it uh, means if your, your vector B, the system, belongs to the image of A, then there is an infinity of solution. Not one single, but an infinity. But if B is not, it doesn't belong to, then there is no solution. Otherwise, 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 there is no, otherwise, there is no, uh, no solution. Why there is no solution? Why here there is an infinity of solution in this case? Because if, for example, U is a solution of the system, is a solution of the system, then we have A U equal B. And let us suppose there is another solution, like W. W is also a solution. A, a solution. Then we have A dot W equal B. We make the difference. We find that, so we have A U minus W equals zero. What does that mean? It means u minus w belong to the null space. If it was, if a is, is invertible, the only element uh, in a is zero, and we should have u equal w. But because the null space contain an infinity of uh, vectors, U and V, U and W can be a solution, can be both a solution, and W can be anything uh, such that the difference, always the difference must be equal to null A. You can easily check uh, here, you can easily check here that if, uh, let's say, the vector, this vector is a solution, then this line parallel to the null space is also solution. So this vector, this vector, this vector, this vector, all are solution of, uh, of, uh, of the system when A is singular. So this is uh, the conclusion for this section, matrix algebra. So for uh, the reference, um, there is a good book for uh, linear algebra. Linear algebra, the basic concepts uh, you should learn in linear algebra. Uh, I have, of course, here done, uh, I think, a good revision. Uh, the, all what we need to, uh, for this, uh, for this chapter to understand how to solve a system of linear, uh, of linear equations. So, but if you want more, you can check a good book. Uh, by uh, David C. Lay et al.
It all means there are actually there are two other authors, and the title is Linear Algebra. Linear Algebra. Uh, and its and its applications. Uh, the edition I have studied is uh, the fifth edition in uh, I think 2016. It's a very good book, very easy to read, very simple, and uh, you find uh, the proof of theorems, more examples. Etc. If you are not comfortable with linear algebra, I advise to uh, at least the first uh, the first four chapters. So at least at least on the first four uh, chapters, and uh, and that's it. Uh, see you inshallah in the next video. Peace.